Oh, hey guys, and oh, welcome to Ocean Roadies. Today we're not at the ocean, we're not on the road either. We are finding ourselves in prehistoric times because we are here at the Cromlech dos Almandres. Deep in the Alentejo region of Portugal, surrounded by oak trees, lies a mysterious stone circle. This structure is believed to have been built over 7,000 years ago and has puzzled archaeologists and historians for decades. But what do we know about this mythical place and the people who built it? In the early morning, I drove to the Cromlech to witness the sunrise and find out more. First of all, what is a Cromlech? Cromlech is a type of structure which uses a variety of upright stones in a circle. These kind of stones, upright place like this, is called a monolith or a menhir, which I think sounds like a word from Lord of the Rings. This place is called the Cromlech dos Almandres, and Almandres comes from the word almond, as these stones have the shape of an oval or an almond. Humans started to create this structure over 7,000 years ago, which means that these Portuguese Cromlech predates the Stonehenge by over 2,000 years. This Cromlech is one of the oldest and biggest that you can find in Europe and perhaps the world. The construction of this Cromlech started in the Neolithic Age. The Neolithic Age is the time when humans became more sedentary and started to live more together in communions, they started agriculture, they stopped moving around a little bit. It is thought that they started construction 7,000 years ago, but it took several thousands of years before it was finished. And they could see that from the type of stone they were using, which meant that the tradition of placing these stones was passed down from generation to generation. So this region here in Portugal, as one of the most condensed prehistoric sites of all over the world. Over the years, over 100 menhirs have been placed in the circle. Aside from the Cromlech, there are ancient burial grounds found in the region, also known as Dolmen. Moving all these massive menhirs into place took an insane amount of work. So why would they go to all this trouble to build this place? A key to solving this mystery can be found not only in the Cromlech itself, but also in the sky above. The Cromlech is kind of shaped as an oval. And if you look at the top point and the south point, it matches exactly the equinoxes. And the equinox is the time of the year when the day and the night is about the equal length. So that's around 20th of March and 20th of September. During those times, the sunrise starts completely at the ending of this place. There's also one more monolith found over there which is very large. And that one seems to be aligned with the summer solstice, meaning that the sun comes up exactly at that place in the summer. Before, they also found a man here, which represents the winter solstice. However, this one was unfortunately destroyed and couldn't be recovered. The alignment of the Cromlech with the equinoxes indicates it might have been used as an astronomical observatory, but it could also mean that it was an important place for ceremonies. The equinoxes and the solstices were important days of celebration. Large groups of people could gather here to trade goods, hold ceremonies and exchange stories with each other. Archaeologists discovered this place in 1966 and they were baffled by the amount of work that would be required to move all these stones to this place. So, how did they do it? Legends speak of giant women building the Cromlech called the Muras and Contendas, were sometimes imagined as beautiful and seductive, other times as a snake or a bull. They were guarding the dolmen and could speak with the dead, spin the rays of the sun and even create the world. It is said that Neolithic tribes would hunt for these oval shaped stones so they could be placed right here in this Cromlech. Remember, this was done 7,000 years ago. It was a time before wheels did even exist, but they did use the logs of the trees. 
They could use the logs of those trees to move different types of structures. They would start by digging a hole in the ground and using ropes and a lever to leverage these huge stones into their place. Filled up the hole with sand and stones and other materials, which led to the stones being standing upright. On some of these stones, we can still find engravings, meaning that these stones were really a piece of art. It's a bit hard to see, but here it's kind of like a half circle. Here you could find something that resembles a nose. One eye here and one eye there means that this stone could have had the engraving of a human face. That could mean that each one of these men here could represent a person of the community. And on this stone right here, it's another very clear engraving. You can see here a hook and a staff. So the hook and the staff is a very old symbol of dominance, of power. It is the shepherd's hook. The hook that they used to control and domesticate the animals. Throughout history, we can see this symbol time and time again. We see it at the pharaohs holding the hook. We still see it today in the church with the bishops and the pope holding a staff that is similar to the shepherd's hook. It's a symbol of power. So, walking around these stones, it really feels like we're in prehistoric times again. It's amazing that you can find a site right here in Portugal. There is still a lot of mystery behind this place. We may guess that it has ceremonial meaning. We may guess that it has an astronomical meaning, this place, but we are not sure. There's no written history from this time. The biggest mystery that still remains is these little markings right here in the stones. These are called the cup marks. Some theories say that it matches the constellations of the stars, but also there we cannot find enough patterns. So let me know in the comments, what do you think the cup marks were for? Right, so we're about one kilometer away from the Kromlech and we're going to follow this very narrow path which leads to one more man here and it's a very big one okay <laughs> another man here. Call me crazy, but it does remind me of something, you know, something from a mill. Oh my god, it looks like a huge... Packer! Oh wow. Anyway, <laughs> this man here, if you look at the position correlated to the Kromlech, represents the summer solstice. Proves to show that the idea of the Kromlech can really be something astronomical. This man here is indeed one of the largest ones that can be found in this region. It's about four meter high. So, also on this massive man here, you can see some engravings. It's a bit hard to see, but looking closely, it does look like the sign of the shepherd's hook again. And we can also see right here, some cup marks. Even though it's very interesting to see some of the men here is having beautiful engravings, but actually it's quite rare to see the engravings. It is conceivable that instead of engraving most of the men here, people were actually painting them. Of course, the paint wouldn't have lasted 7,000 years. But just think of how interesting it could look to see the prehistoric people draw wonders of art on all of these men here. Let me know how you would like to decorate one of those men years on your own. All right, guys, we've seen the Kromlech. We've seen the men here that represents the summer solstice. As I've said before, this entire area consists of many prehistoric structures. There is one more I'd like to show you. It is one of the dolmen. Let's check it out and let's be on our way. All right, to get to the last side today, we have to do a little bit of walking. Uh, there's a lot of farming here, 
actually this area is very beautiful if you have some more time <laughs> then spend it right here in this region of portugal it's uh it's very beautiful and i'm sure you have a very peaceful time here <laughs> so yeah we're almost at the last destination a few more steps let's keep it going Alright guys, here we are at the final prehistoric structure of today. We are in the Ante Grande de Zambugiero, which is one of the great dolmen of this region. A dolmen is a prehistoric place made with big rocks that is often used as a burial ground. Meaning that very important people used to be buried in this place right here. It is thought to be connected to the Cromlech that we have been exploring today. Uh, this structure is said to be built around 3000 or 4000 before Christ. So a bit later than the construction of the Cromlech. I'm quite familiar with this type of dolmen because in the Netherlands we have many too. We call them the Hunnebedde. So it's very nice to see that these kind of structures can be found all over the world. So the last man here that we've seen, as I said, it reminds you a little bit about the body of a mill. Now, it is said that these kind of dolmen could be correlated with a similar type of body parts, but from the female. We are born coming from the womb, and it is thought of that these kind of structures were made to represent the uterus and the womb itself. Meaning, when you get buried, you return back into the womb, only to be reborn once again in the afterlife. So, what have we learned today? I think we can definitely say that there's a lot of historical interesting places to be seen all over the world. If you can recommend me any historic places to visit, please let me know in the comments. It's amazing that these places can be found right here in Portugal. They are as big and as interesting as the Stonehenge, but way less popular. So hopefully this video will help to make this part of Portugal a little bit more popular as well. If you enjoyed this prehistoric adventure, please give a thumbs up, subscribe for more adventures, and then we'll see you on the road. Cheers!